Okay, well, how is it that you can create a color image from three monochromatic images? Well, we map each stack to an individual color, red, green, and blue. It got off to a cloudy and windy start, gusting up to about 25 knots, which is not ideal when you're trying to take five minute sub exposures because the mount will get bucked around by that wind. So with that in mind, I stuck with a simple game plan. I just wanted to image in the hydrogen alpha channel. I needed a further two hours and I knew that I'd probably have to bin a lot of subs due to that wind. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to bring you in to PixInsight. I'll show you the subframe selector and blink tool to give you an appreciation of once we've got the data, what goes into actually selecting the best frames and culling the rest. I've just loaded all of my sub exposures for hydrogen alpha channel into the subframe selector here. As you can see, it plots a graph for a given parameter. The first thing I'm going to do is select stars. Number of stars is a great indicator of whether you are being affected by cloud or being out of focus, for example. So I'm going to only accept images that have more than 8,500 stars. So I'm going to come into my subframe selector expressions box and I'm going to type stars greater than 8,500 and run that and you can see it's put a bunch of red X's there to cull the stars that I don't want to use. Now, I'm not just going to go off stars, however, I'm now going to go to something called full width half maximum. In simple terms, what that is, is the size of the stars. How bloated are the stars? And stars tend to become more bloated when they're out of focus. So if they're nice and sharp and in focus, the FWHM number will be smaller. Now, as we can see, Given that I'm after low numbers, not high numbers, many of the images that have already been culled did actually have a high FWHM. And right now, based on what I've culled, it's saying that I have accepted or approved 55% of the images that were in that batch from last night. At the moment, I'm sitting therefore on about five hours of good hydrogen alpha data, which is bang on for what I want for this final image. Okay, let's do one last parameter here. We're going to come in and we're going to select PSF signal weight. Usually what we do is we use PSF signal weight as the primary culling factor in the automated program. So let's just have a look to see if the manual culling we've just done is going to line up well with what PSF signal weight would cull in the automated stacking process. With PSF signal weight, we're interested in numbers that are higher. The higher, the better. And as you can see, all of these low liars have been culled by my use of number of stars and full width half maximum. So that's excellent. What's left is basically all within standard deviation one. And most importantly, you can see that some of the, some of the images that were actually in standard deviation one, which possibly would have been let through by the automated stacking program were culled by this manual subframe selection that I've undertaken here going through the manual process, you will cull some images that perhaps the automated program would have let slip through. So now we use something called the blink tool to apply our own human eye to the stack that we've already culled using the subframe selection to see if there's anything in there that we want to get rid of. Now, airplanes and satellites, you'll see some white flashes through this when I play this back quickly, are not a big deal because the stacking process is very good at culling those out using a process called Windsorized Sigma clipping. So I'm not too worried about satellites and airplane lights. Mainly what I'm looking for is any cloud. The inversion of the image, you can see the rotation 180 degrees is when you see the meridian flip happen. Right now in the background, I'm running a plugin called Easy Live Stack. And this is actually a fantastic tool for while I'm actually imaging uh, to see what the stack is going to look like in real time as that data is getting collected. But right now, for my purposes, I've got all the data and this is just a very quick way to have a look at what the stack is going to look like without actually going through a full blown stacking process uh, in the automated um, way to batch pre-processing within PixInsight, which is quite a time consuming process. Fully stacking 57 images might take upwards of an hour and a half when you're applying all the calibration frames to it. But doing it this way, this is going to be ready in a few minutes 
and give us a good appreciation of how strong the signal is there in HA. My bet is it's gonna be very strong because you can see even from single five minute sub exposures, the signal there is very intense. So when we're gonna stack 57 of those photos on top of each other, we're gonna get a great image in the HA channel. So Easy Live Stacker has just finished doing its thing and what I've got on the screen now is on the left, one single five minute sub exposure. On the right, 56 five minute sub exposures. So just under five hours of data on the right versus five minutes of data on the left. And immediately it's readily apparent that there's significantly more signal on the right. If we zoom in on the cave nebula and its structure, it's important to remember that these photons departed there 400 BC, 2,400 years ago. They'd be traveling at the speed of light for 2,400 years to reach the camera sensor last night. You can see immediately there's just a ton more nebulosity there. These photons are arriving at a rate of anywhere from tens to hundreds of photons per minute. It's a very, very slow rate compared to how much light is saturating us here down on the surface of Earth. And that's why we have to spend hours and hours gathering those photons to actually accrue enough to create a pleasing image. Something I really love in Astro is dark nebula dust. And it, the more data you get, the better it looks. And you can see that it's dark nebula dust because it blocks out the stars behind it. So this dark region here, you can see is concealing the stars behind it. And you get these lovely little rivulets, if you will, through the image, these dark rivulets. And I, I just find them very pleasing. So you can see that in the single five minute sub exposure, the data is barely there. You can, you can barely see those dark rivulets. But on the right, with 56 images, just under five hours of data, they smack you in the face, which I absolutely love. So here it is, a test HOO image with hydrogen alpha mapped to red and oxygen three mapped to green and blue. And this is an image that's been pulled together very quickly without any application of calibration frames, so flats, darks, dark flats, none of that. Simply the data combined to give me an appreciation of what I can expect if I decide to put it through a full editing process. Very quick, very dirty, and you can see the data already supports some decent results. All right, I'll see you next time.